lovelies. Thank you for joining me for today's discussion on uh, Rule of Rose. So, yes, this is a stream, but it's going to be treated more like a discussion video of the kind that I used to do. Um, the kind that I, I did for uh, Rule of Rose before. I think I made discussion videos for it, but like I did for The Path and various other videos, this video is... Uh, this, this video is just going to be discussion. So I wanted to start off by talking about the characters, what we know so far about them, and what's been going on in the story. Um, it's pretty late my time. As you can see, it's 10.16pm, uh, which is late for some people. So um, I'm not expecting anybody to be able to jump on, so, but that's totally okay. I have uh, an outline here that I wanted to go over and stuff that I wanted to bring up and talk about anyways. If anybody wants to jump into the chat and join us and contribute their feedback, I do have a no spoilers tag up for this stream in particular. So, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, repeat that as a reminder to anybody who jumps in here. No spoilers. Where this is just uh, speculation and analysis and what have you. So, so far, the main characters that we've encountered uh, appear to be Diana, who is, uh, what did they call her? The, um, hmm, the strong-willed princess, I think is what they referred to her as originally. Um, then we have, this is uh, Margaret, or Meg, for sure. Arcavius has arrived! Hello! It's not 1 a.m., my dear. It is 10, 17 p.m. At least for me. I know you're in Florida, so 1 a.m. Is, is correct for you, yes. I was not expecting to, to see my, um, my East Coast friends awake at this hour. <laughs> anyway, as I was just telling our archive viewers, um, this is actually going to be mostly a discussion video on what's been going on in Rule of Rose. And uh, it's actually great that you're here because you've been here for the majority of the... Um, <laughs> yes, blah, if I am here. I am here and I am recording. I'm recording again. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to re be repeating this multiple times. So you archive viewers who are just watching this on YouTube, going to bear with me. But I want people to feel involved and what's to know what's going on. Uh, it is 1018 for me as well, Mr. Blah. So uh, anyways, I was saying ADD moment. Right. This is a discussion. This is a discussion uh, stream, a la the discussion videos that I used to do for some of the other um, analyzed analytical games that I played. And I was just talking about, uh, so I have an outline here that I want to go over of my thoughts and um, what, I, what I have come up with. And at any time, you guys can chime in with your own thoughts or opinions about what's been going on or thoughts about the characters or anything like that. So I want this to be... Uh, interactive, if you'd like. The rose is calling from inside the house. However, I do want to uh, very firmly state that this is a no-spoiler stream right here. So if you know what happens in the game, uh, please keep it to yourself, because I do want it to be an experience that I go through while playing the game. So, so far, uh, we've met Diana, the strong-willed princess. She seems to be the biggest power player of the bunch so far. She's kind of the boss. She appears to be the oldest of the three, but not older than us, it kind of looks like. She looks like she's younger than us, but older than the other two. In fact, I would say that she's probably the oldest child that we've seen at the orphanage so far. Um, what did I write about Diana? Uh, anyway, this is, uh, this is Margaret, or Meg, who was described as the uh, the wise-looking princess. And we've gotten the impression so far from her that she's creative, she's inventive, she's administrative, kind of, because she does have that book. And I'll, and I'll bring up a picture that shows her holding it right now. Uh, so we got Meg, right, where she's holding this. Uh, let's put that one back up because it ruins everything. <laughs> so she's holding Margaret's little book and if you don't recall from the game inside it she had the rules of the Red Crayon Aristocrats or the Red Crayon Society or whatever it's called 
Um, like she had the rules, the guidelines, and everything. So she seems to be like the secretary. Um, later on in the book, she has inventions that she's made that she's come up with herself. She's an inventor, actually. That's why she had that lab downstairs. She had invented that onion bag that she called it, which was the bag that we got thrown into as punishment when we were framed for ripping up Meg's note, love note to Diana. So she invented that onion bag Maybe because it makes you cry, I guess. I, I sweat. That probably was her thinking. I'm being hosted by Dave on Refney. Why, thank you, Mr. Dave. Cam! Rose, Rose, I missed your other stream because I had to work. No worries, my dear. I am glad to have you here. We are, uh, we're doing a discussion stream. So I'm currently talking about uh, Eleanor, and I was basically going to do a rundown of, uh, of what we've encountered so far and some analysis of the characters and story and if you have anything to throw in as long as it doesn't include spoilers uh of course i remember you cam oh my gosh yeah yes of course i remember you in fact you should have you deserve a vip badge remind me to do that so <laughs> red crayon aristocrat aristocrat club or society or something yes um, okay, so more about Meg. Her, she is creative and inventive, but she's also cruel because the inventions that were found in her book and some of the uh, objects that we found strewn around her lab that we were in were, they were all torture. They were all torture devices. So she, she definitely has a cruel streak in her. And while she still has... And while she has the cruel streak in her where she's she's got, you know, some some sadist uh, tendencies, I think she is, as we found out with the letter with um, Diana, a bit of a romantic herself. So she uh, wrote the letter to Diana saying that she was in love with her, you know, my dearest Diana, my most beautiful and all that. It was actually quite poetic and a bit sweet. Um, however, what Diana did with that letter is she shared it with Eleanor and then ripped it to pieces and then, like, hid the pieces. She then had us collect the pieces and put them together, and then once we found both pieces, they pretty much framed us for, like, ripping it apart. Uh, Meg stepped in right at the wrong time and basically thought that we were... I don't know, mocking her. So, and that's when we, that's when we saw the cruel streak. She had us uh, thrown inside the onion bag for a little bit of, a little bit of after school torture. So that is Meg. And you'll notice that um, she's wearing what looks a little bit like a school uniform. She's got the socks up to her knees. She kind of lives up to the, the bookish stereotype of having glasses. She has the tie of a school uniform and, uh, and vest over, which is very different from what uh, Diana's wearing. Diana's wearing uh, a nice little dress, but most notably it has the low-cut V-neck showing that she's reached the age of puberty and um, she's... I think she understands the effect. She is at the age where she understands the effect that she can have on people uh, manipulatively, um, knowing that she's pretty, using it against others, her friends. Um, so that is what I had to say about like observations that we can make about the characters. Um, also, Meg has a shorter conservative hairstyle with a just a conservative headband holding her hair back, glasses. She's pretty much completely clothed, as opposed to Diana, whose hair is long, and you might say wild because it has it's no it's unrestrained. It has it's not pulled back. Nothing. There's really no style at all to it. It's just hanging down, free spirited, if you will. Um, after that, we have Eleanor, who is. Uh, 
who is the Cam. Oh my god, darling, you were the one who were saying that you couldn't wait for me to analyze this game, weren't you? Last time you were on stream, you were say you were saying uh you, like you were waiting for me to start analyzing it. Well, aha, you've arrived. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> uh let's switch over to Eleanor. I may have called Meg Eleanor a few times by accident, sorry. You know who I'm talking about. So now we have Eleanor who has the who has had the birdcage with her the entire time. Yes, that was she. Uh the entire time since we've seen her at the beginning. Um she's definitely younger than Diana. She looks like she might be a little bit younger than Meg. But um so Eleanor was described as the cold-hearted princess, and I think that that's, that's even reflected in the pose that she makes in her curtsy. She's turned away, and she's not making eye contact with whoever it is she's curtsying to. Ark says, sorry to derail, but I guess Epic Games is selling close to the sun at a discount, so instead of $29.99, it can be bought at $19.99. All right, let me write that down, close to the sun. Disregard this. It's for uh, ER room visit billing. Close to the sun. Okay, I wrote it down. Cool. It's on, you say it's on Epic Games. Alrighty, I'll take a look at that. Uh, to be perfectly honest, probably can't play that for a bit. I have uh, some games that I already own that I would probably play before buying a new one. Anyways. <gasps> notes, notes, look at your notes, Miss ADD Brain. Okay, right, okay. So about being cold-hearted, she's, um, she's looking away from, what, the camera, the, the person that she's facing or the person who she's curtsying. It's like she's uninterested, she's, she's just detached. And her little cage is empty here. Uh, I think up until the point we got to in the game where we found the bird dead, where it was uh, presumably stolen by, or kidnapped, or birdnapped by Diana, she had the bird in there the whole time, and now it's empty because now the bird's dead. Um, so we haven't heard a lot come out of this, this little girl's mouth, but from what I do remember, um... Diana was talking with Eleanor about Meg's love letter and basically just saying, ugh, I don't like her, and talking shit, basically talking shit. And um, Eleanor just comes off as very aloof to everyone, off, to everyone around her. Um, we saw her a couple of times off on her own while we were exploring the airship in the beginning. She was uh, in with the other animals. That's I think that's the first time we actually found her in the game. Was that she was in the uh, animal storage section and just hanging out by herself with her birdcage, her bird, and the animals. So maybe she is just one of those types who gets a lot, who, who likes animals more than people. Um, I also wanted to note that when <clears throat> when we were looking for the bird, Meg and Diana were taking bets on whether Eleanor would be furious or whether she would cry. And true to the description of being the cold-hearted princess, her reaction was actually neither. It was nothing. There was no reaction. Uh, so any, any, any emotions that she was feeling, if she did feel any, she kept inside. So... Again, unfeeling and detached, cold-hearted. Uh, and that's what I have for Eleanor. Blawiff says her look away seems to show as being introverted since she doesn't talk much and usually avoids eye contact. It could be that she's introverted, you're right. But I, uh, I think it also could indicate that she's just detached from other people and uninterested. Okay, so after that we have the other character that we've been introduced to is 
the outrageously insane Amanda. So Amanda, it's been shown, has been pretty much the orphanage uh, punching bag. Uh, everything seems to be taken out on her. We don't know if she's kind of insane because of just being the bottom uh, totem on the totem pole, I guess, if, if that's the right word, if that's the right phrase. She's basically been the bottom rung of the ladder this whole time. So is she crazy and kind of disturbed and, you know, mentally and socially off because of that? Or is she treated that way because of pre-existing behaviors and personality and disposition? I, ten I, I would tend to favor the explanation that um, uh, she's being treated this way because she is different, because she's overweight, whereas the other girls aren't. I think it's basically your classic mean girls versus, you know, the girl that was bullied because she was different, she was weird, and she was overweight. Does that justify her very strange behavior? I mean, no, no. You see, see, do you see how my reaction during the game so far has been? I don't really want to befriend Amanda, and I have a couple of reasons for that. Um, at first, it seemed like it was okay, like maybe we can be friends, but. Her apology on top of the airship, when she was apologizing for rubbing the, uh, the, the the rat against our face, it was just insane. Like, she... I almost took her seriously at first. You know, that she was really sorry. She was genuinely upset. Maybe she thought she finally had found somebody who wasn't going to ridicule her constantly and put her down and torment her. And she basically did what she had to do for social survival. But, to the point of begging, um, I mean, I guess that could show her desperation, but it came off more as madness. And, um, not only that, I, I feel like it should weigh very heavily that while she was rubbing the rat against our face, she seemed very hesitant and resistant at first, but then as she was doing it, she was getting into it. And that shows, like, that she is, she is kind of sick-minded, disturbed, or, or, or sadistic. Um, she, she seems to know that that same thing is going to happen to her already. So... She just flat out tells us, when it's her turn, do it with no remorse. But she gets really into it when she's describing it. So, she seems, un she comes off as unhinged and unstable, um, fearful, but then also, like, sadistic at the same time. Kind of like... If she was in power, she'd be just as fucked up at all as all these other girls in, in like in their terms of wanting to um, wanting to put others down in their place, having that that very addictive like power position where you can hurt others or you can even torture others like Meg did to us. So I think that this is probably the most complicated character so far. I think there's multiple forces acting on the player at this point. I think uh, initially it comes off as uh, they want the game wants you to feel sorry for her and have sympathy, but then they kind of take that away from you at the same time by making her come off as unhinged. Does anybody else have some thoughts about Amanda they want to throw in here? That's pretty much all I got. I, I feel like I have these thoughts and these impressions about Amanda that I'm just not able to, to put into words as well. 
So obviously she's she's not the most attractive girl that we've come across in the orphanage and they show us that scene of her looking into the mirror applying makeup. With her applying lipstick. She's applying lipstick. And so I think that that is showing us that she wants to be beautiful. She wants to be pretty. She wants to be she has the desi the desire, I think, to be pretty. Maybe maybe it was an acknowledgement that she's not pretty. Blawith says she may be a bit bipolar with how easily her moods change from being helpful and apologetic to angry and sadistic. Well, that's actually a really, really good thought. Ark, Ark says, Amanda seems jealous of the popularity the other girls share. She uses Jennifer to try and get ahead. That makes her a nasty person. I totally agree with that. She's, a, she's definitely a nasty person. <sighs> she uses Jennifer to try to get ahead. Do you think she was genuinely using Jennifer to try to get ahead? Or she, o she was only doing that because she was forced to. That's a... I'm really glad you brought that up, Ark. Did she do it because she had to? Or did she do it because she saw an opportunity to rise within the ranks? And going back to Blawith, what you're saying about being bipolar, my question about that, though, is... Um, helpful and apologetic to angry and sadistic. Did we see her angry, though? I think bipolar may not be the word you're looking for, because my understanding of bipolar is... Um, varying wildly between the extremes of, um, what do they call it, Eufo euphoric or um, like episodes of ecstasy and euphoria and uh, depression and withdrawnness. Ark says she's, she's more so desperate for what she desires that she feels. She needs to play the role she must in order to get ahead, that is. I think you're right. They are kids, Cam. They're good point. That's really good that you're you're bringing that up. Maybe they're developing who they are, but we have to remember they're developing who they are without adult guidance or intervention. So maybe is this a little bit of a um, like a parallel to Lord of the Flies, where it's showing us. The possibility of what would happen um, to a society of children left unadulted. Blawith says she was totally doing it because before Jennifer showed up, she was the lowest of the low. When then, when she was at the bottom, she would ease off Amanda, and she got to harass Jennifer. Yeah, good point. Good point. Ark says, so for instance, being nice and apologetic to Jennifer just so Jennifer helps, only to laugh and take the credit when the time comes. She did, didn't she? Yeah, she took credit for catching, I think, was it a butterfly? It was, it was something. It was something that we caught together, I think. You're right, Ark. Uh, I, think, I think that Amanda is so desperate for what she desires that she feels she needs to play the role she must. Um, and that she was playing this game. She was playing this game with the girls before we showed up. She was at the bottom rung of the ladder. Oh, that's what Blawith said. Yeah, I agree with you, Blawith. She was totally doing it. Huh. So, I think that hypothetically, if, uh, if Amanda had the opportunity to, um, to 
step on us to get to the top, she absolutely would. And because I sense that from her, I don't want to be her friend. I don't trust her. I don't feel like she's going to be an ally to us. Did I have any more pictures? Nope, those were all my pictures. So, uh, since we had just brought up Lord of the Flies, I wanted to um, I wanted to talk about a little, like some of the the themes in the game. I was thinking about. I was thinking about their situation. This, this orphanage and this society and this rule of Rose is something that they created for themselves. They pretty much took over the orphanage. And what I had come up with um, is, well, as we were just describing in, in at length, these, these kids set up like a hierarchy and um, a system for moving up and down that hierarchy. And it's pretty cruel and it's pretty unfair, but that's what they've, that's what they've gone to without adults supervision and adult guidance. But what, uh, what other things have kind of blossomed from this scenario is that uh, in two situations now, in, in two instances, we've seen um, like, Girl, like girls either playing romantic games with each other or like Meg flat out saying that she's in love with Diana. So in the opening cutscene, you have the two girls who are in the garden playing and it's the most adorable, I love that little shot right there, it's so cute, where they're praying, playing prince and princess. And one of the girls says, I am Joshua, I will serve you, princess. Just kiss me, please. And they're holding hands adorably and like rubbing foreheads. And it was really cute. So I think that one of the things being, being shown here or being said or stated by the game, maybe even if I could go so far as to say that, is that left to their own devices and without guidance from adults, uh, without the influence like being able to observe other adults without the outside world making impressions on them, um, homosexual relationships uh, arose naturally. And um, that goes towards the argument of is homosexuality nature or nurture? Is it, is it biological? Is it something that people are born like? Or is it... Uh, as some people believe, an influence of their environment. So a couple decades ago, people would say, oh, don't, don't show on TV uh, homosexual situations or partners. Don't, don't have a gay couple in a commercial because it'll influence our kids. That's what people were hysterical about. Were, were hysterical about. And um, nowadays, we're, we don't really feel that way so much. Like, there was, a, at the Super Bowl this year, or last year or something, at the Super Bowl, one of the commercials was with two dads in a family. Two dads with kids, instead of the traditional husband and wife. So that's really shown that we've, we've been more progressive towards acceptance. So I think that this game, at least, is, uh, is siding with nature versus nurture. You take out the nurture aspect of um, the influence of their environment around them. And n like in this scenario, Eleanor like has naturally gravitated to having a crush on Diana. So I thought that was interesting. There are, there are still people, it's still a big question. It's still a really big question that people are trying to answer, people struggle with. Is, is homosexuality a nature versus nurture? Is it a combination of the two? And uh, in what quantities? So wh what, is the, what is the more, what is the higher uh, portion of influence? How you were born, your biology, 
your brain chemistry maybe, um, your personality, right? By two years old, by two years old, your personality has been established. Well, not, not entirely, right? Not, not the personality you're going to have um, when you're 15, but things that, ha things that happen in the first two years of your life are going to affect your personality. But as a lot of mothers will tell you, babies are born with personalities. So, but I think the anti-gay crowd, the anti-homosexuality crowd, that they tend to go, they tend to lean towards like the nurture par portion where they say, uh, or wh where they believe or insist that it's a matter of environmental causes and bad influences and, you know, oh, if they see it on TV, then they'll start thinking about it. Or if they, I don't know, have an uncle who's gay, then that uncle can't, can't come to the f family gatherings or whatever. Which I think is, uh, I think that's pretty shit, but that's just my own personal opinion. And we're not talking about my personal opinion. We're talking about Rule of Rose. All right. So I have a little bit more in here uh, written down in my little notepad. So the ongoing... The ongoing references to Jennifer being a bad girl, or dirty, or filthy. Um, I've talked about that a few times already, so I, I don't have much more to add. But what I do have to add is, um, is this uh, is this survivor's remorse? If all of this is happening inside Jennifer's head, because as we read in the newspaper. The orphanage, all the, all the children in the orphanage, orphanage were killed. They were all murdered. They're all dead. We don't know if Jennifer was in the orphanage at that time and was killed too, and literally all the characters are dead, or whether she was adopted out, she was adopted, and then it happened. And she is the sole survivor of the orphanage because she got out in time. If so... Are all, is all this talk about being a bad girl and she's done terrible things, is it survivor's remorse? Or is it guilt? Survivor's guilt? Or did she actually have something to do with it? Did she actually have something to do with um, that huge tragedy? Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was calling her dirty. I just found it really interesting is though okay so so apparently Jennifer is supposed to be like so dirty she's filthy she's just repulsive right but then why was it that uh, why was it that when the rat was rubbed on our face it was alive and clean and Amanda's dad rat was dead and covered in maggots like that just strikes me as possibly important because if the uh madman dog hey how's it going in good to see you here my friend glad to have you i am so surprised at how many people are showing up it is actually kind of late and i didn't i didn't think i didn't think hardly anyone would be here Anyways, we're doing a discussion uh, stream, Madman Dog. And uh, I was just finishing up the uh, thoughts that I had written down that I wanted to state. And then um, if anybody wanted to add stuff, they are most welcome to. So I, I just thought that regarding the rat, if the developers really wanted to, to do something gross... Good lord, Cam. 150. I hope you don't have to work in the morning, dear. Uh, they would have given Jennifer the dead, decaying rat. Think about it, though. Think about it. It was a, it was a conscious decision. The developer, the, the, the writer, whoever, the creative mind who developed the story, made a conscious decision to give Amanda the dead, 
infected rat and not Jennifer. Is it because Amanda's dead and Jennifer is alive? Which would go with the, uh, you know, the down the road of Jennifer being the sole survivor? Did you see that part, Cam? Did you see when the, uh, let me find it. Let me pull it up right now. Do, 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 do. Holy shit! Ah! I've got to show you this. Oh my lord, I've got to show you this. Open it. Open link in new window. Oh, crap. Look at this. <laughs> That's amazing! I want to zoom in. Oh, I'm zooming out. I don't mean to... No, what? There. How crazy is that? That's ridiculous. Oh my god, that's amazing. You saw the scene a long time ago? Cool. So, where is the one I'm looking for, though? The rat. Amanda's rat. Amanda's rat. Where is it? Amanda Rat. Let's type that. Let's try that. I thought I saw it. I thought I saw a picture of it on here. Aw, it's gone. Dang it. It's gone or it was never there. <laughs> okay, but you know what I'm talking about. The the why is Mrs. Doubtfire shoving a stick in that poor girl's face? <laughs> well. Um, it was part of the game. Madman. Uh, anyway. So. I think those are pretty much my thoughts so far. That's, that's my analysis. Um, I think that there's still not enough information to um, to accurately guess what the st what the story is, you know, about what happened to the girls and what's actually going on. Are they all dead and this is the afterlife? Or sadly, I missed a lot of your gameplay. Said Mad Man. Oh, don't worry about it. Like, uh, I I posted some on YouTube and then. What hasn't been posted on YouTube is uh, if you go over to like past broadcasts, you can you can catch up over there. If I haven't put those videos <coughs> onto YouTube yet, so I think maybe option wise, option wise, we have all these girls are dead, Jennifer included, and something and something. <laughs> No worries, Ark. Thanks for showing up. Sleep well. Have a good night. I will see you next stream. Or, uh, or that Jennifer's the sole survivor and she's um, she's reliving this in her mind because of survivor's guilt. Or she had something to do with it. She had something to do with it or she feels like she's responsible for it, such as like... I don't know, saying something to the murderer that tipped him off. Or um, maybe the murderer was her adopted father. Something like that. But, um, oh, didn't mention since more people showed up. Um, this is a spoiler-free discussion, so I, I did want to keep it to speculations. And not uh, answer, answer questions if you already, if you already know how it ends. Anyway, I think that's pretty much what I had. That is what I had to say about um, Rule of Rose so far. Is there anything else that anyone wanted to bring up, mention, 
ask a question about. Blah says, or maybe it's all from the point of view from the dead rat on a stick. <laughs> That would be a trip. So you finished it for the second time? Like I said, I missed a lot of this. Uh, I did not finish it the first time I played it. I am much farther in the game right now than I ever got last time I, last time I did the LP. So at this point, I'm going in blind. Well, hmm. you know, Jennifer has been markedly quiet the entire time we played the game. I don't think we've ever heard her speak. We've never heard her speak, and we've never seen any dialogue of her speaking. She's had no voice acting so far and there's been no dialogue of her speech. That has to be for a reason. When, I mean, it's been implied that she has spoken when she's talking to the prince that stands on top of that throne whenever we uh, select a new storybook. The, the boy that we or, were on the bus with when we first arrived. You're right. She talks to Brown. That's the only time we've heard her voice. You're right. I stand corrected. Cam says, You've actually seen a similar scene from a show with the rat? Similar how? <laughs> that it was tied to a stick and rubbed in someone's face? What are your thoughts on the missing adults, says Blah. What are your theories on their absence? Well, they rub it in a girl's face, says Cam. Were, was it a, was it like a spoof? A spoof of this? As far as the adults are concerned, we've, we've seen We've seen one, I think. One adult, and that's Martha, the cleaning lady, who was kind of a bitch to us at first, and she was cleaning the floor. She was she was cleaning the floor with a rag and bucket. And she gets carried, that's right, she gets carried away by the little ghoul children. She gets carried away by the little ghoul children and then we find her most recently tied up. You're saying this is a this is a show, Cam? Cam? Not a game? We do read the headmaster's book, the headmaster's journal. We read one page from it, in fact. That says that the children have begun to behave oddly. I don't know how to reconcile the two facts that we have. That the headmaster said that the children were acting strangely. But then we know what happened was that the, uh, all the children were killed. That's right. You're right. No, Hoffman was the doctor. I don't, I don't believe that guy was the headmaster. I, was he? he? I thought he was the doctor. You might be right. Ah, oh, Anne of Green Gables. 
Damn, that uh, that takes me back. My sister loved Anne of Green Gables and Anne of Albany and Anne uh, Anne of uh, the whole series. Wait, guys, what if? You know what I was in the middle of saying is how do I reconcile that the the headmaster said that the children had begun to behave strangely, and finding out and, and thinking that they took over the orphanage, right? Because there's no adults around. And the fact that we found out that all of the orphans were murdered. Well, maybe both happened. Maybe both happened. Maybe the children went, you know, rebellion and took over. And that's, and maybe the man killed all the kids because they had went crazy and were doing all this crazy stuff. No, it doesn't feel right. Did they do a remake of uh, Anne of Green Gables? That that those were mo like sh like long episode or movies or something. My uh, my sister had a uh, VHS cassettes, VHS tapes rather. Of all the, um, of the whole series, the whole Anne of Green Gables series. Huh. Well, it doesn't feel right. I might be on the right track, but it doesn't feel quite right. From what I've seen of the man in the cinematics, in the, uh, the opening, the opening, in the intro... Um, he seems like a bad guy. He doesn't seem like he was ridding the world of a bunch of satanic, demonic, evil to the core children. Oh, it's darker. Oh, oh my. I must have to look in this. Well, guys, I think that's all I have for you on a Rule of Rose discussion so far. Um, generally trying to decide what to do now. I, I, I have half a mind to actually play something. Like Bad Dream Coma. I don't know. Give me a minute, guys. Uh, would any of you be up for that? Do any of you have to leave soon? Is anybody sticking around? Anybody hanging out? And now you're going to eat some ice cream and play Minecraft. <laughs> I could do that. I have the most amazing ice cream right now. It's called the Tonight Dough. Cam says, please do. La Whiff says, I am here. Cam needs some ice cream. I'd share my tonight dough with you. Oh, it's delicious. It's like chocolate ice cream mixed with peanut butter ice cream, I think. But w then with like like little rolled up balls of uh, uh, chocolate, uh, chocolate chip cookie dough. But then like chunks of actual chocolate cookies in it. Oh, oh, oh man. I'm, al I'm also very hungry now, actually. Damn it. Damn it. What did I eat for dinner?
haven't eaten today. What time is it where you are? No, you need to eat. You must eat. Wait a minute. You mean you haven't eaten since you woke up this morning? I demand that you go eat. It is demanded. <laughs> okay, sometimes I forget for like half a day, but I don't have... I don't forget for an entire day. It is decided. Cam will go eat. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. Is there anything else I've purchased recently? Do, 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 do. That is more in line with my mood. Let me just have a little perusal. And see if anything stands out. Although, eh, 11's. 11's not too bad. To the moon. Huh. To the moon. Although, might not be a good idea to start something new. To the moon is sad, says Madman. All right. Oh, it's good. Okay, Cam says it's good. Well, sad is fine. I don't mind. I don't mind sad. Sad. To the moon will make me cry. Oh dear. How long is it? Is it a very long game? Madman does, doesn't think it's l that long. Hmm. Well, four or maybe five hours, depending on how much you stop to analyze. Is it good for that though, Blah? Is it good for some uh, stopping in a little stop, little stop and an analyze? It is. Blah says it is. The man has spoken. <sighs> Let's. Well, why not? If you guys don't mind, I'll uh, I'll give it a look. See, I can't guarantee that uh, I'll finish the game. I I've got a lot of games going on right now, but uh, yes, I will stop to analyze. But uh, we can we can just play some right now. Yeah, let's do it. Uh. Uh huh. Give me a moment. Give me a moment to set it up. Play to the moon. Okay. Um, um, um. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh man, it's totally messing up my screens. Shit. Alright, stay there. Stay there on the just chatting screen. 
Let me try to fix this. Jesus. I can't switch over yet. I'm sorry. It's... Okay, how do I not full screen it? Un unfull screen? Unfull screen. So loud. Okay. Very loud. Damn. Okay. <laughs> Blavo said, he gave me a shiny new bit. Uh, now, let's... Give me a moment to see if I can actually set up a new scene. While I'm streaming. I'm making Chef Boyardee. Right, so... So... So just hang out there. Chill there. Chill there for a minute. Oh, maybe I can do it. Please work. Shit, it's not gonna work. Alt. <laughs> yeah, Cam, all tears are manly. Alright, what I'll have to do is switch over to this. Okay. Alright, what are you guys looking at right now? Oh, you're looking at my desktop. Okay, cool. Well, there. Look at this instead. Oh my gosh. Now I can't see. <sighs> <sighs> Windowed? 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 The hell? I've never played this. I've never played this. 2014. Huh. Alright, we got exit. That's... Shit. That's messing up all my other screens. So... <laughs> Who the hell would just have porn files on their desktop? <gasps> okay. How the fuck am I going to do this? How about, let's put that there, and keep you there, and then switch here. I just have a bunch of games on my desktop, it's not a big deal. Okay, I s now I can't see the chat. That's fantastic. I need to change the resolution of this or put it in windowed mode and it's not letting me put it in windowed mode. Oh, well that's nice to find. What? Reduce screen flickering? Crap. Oh man, what? Oh come on, it's not giving me an option. Oh shit, didn't mean to do that. Uh, what was this set to? E, maybe? Shit. I don't remember! I don't know how to do this. I can't see the chat with, uh, with this screen up. That's not going to work. <sighs> Let's go into Steam. 
So let's see if Steam can do anything for us. So the moon running, properties, set launch options, no, damn it. I don't know what to do, guys. Uh, that window takes up my entire monitor and it messes up, it messes, it shifts everything on my second monitor, like, to off the screen. I can't see it. Oh, that's right, Cam's kitty! Oh my gosh! Wait, is it- wasn't it your sister's kitty? And you wanted to name him Pompeii? You can pull up chat only on your phone. <gasps> it's not a bad idea. Well... Hmm. No, it is your cat? Oh, okay. I see. Just chatting. Ah, oh, you guys are still on my just chatting screen. Damn it. Um, is there supposed to be a shortcut for making this not full screen? not gonna it's not it's not gonna work it's not gonna work it's not gonna work damn it I'll have to figure something else out um yeah I'll, that that's gonna take some tweaking it's gonna take some tweaking and be way easier to uh yeah to get that game in window mode I'm going to have to look at it and tweak it, and um, it's actually way easier to set up, like, new scenes when I'm not streaming. So maybe that's something that I can get ready and have prepared at some point as, like, an alternative. I am getting a little tired, though, so it, it's not a terrible idea to um, end the stream here. I was planning on just doing the uh, the discussion video and then and then be done with it. But uh, so, anyways, I think I will call it here. Um, I'll mess with uh, I'll mess with to the moon and see if I can get it recognized by Streamlabs. Uh, but uh, that's all I have for you tonight, guys. Thanks very much for showing up. I'm very surprised but delighted. And hopefully I can see you guys uh, during the next stream, which is planned for Thursday. Thursday, most likely 2 p.m. normal Pacific Standard Time. All right, you guys have a good night. Sleep well, and goodbye. <laughs>